Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Let's give a little bit of time for everybody to come in through the waiting room. So happy to have our Upward Scholars family here. Welcome, welcome. Good morning. Okay. I think everybody's come in now. So let's officially get started. Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our spring community conversation. My name is Linda Prieto, and I have the joy of serving as the Executive Director of Upward Scholars. I will now make a brief announcement in Spanish for those needing interpretation services. Bienvenidos y gracias por acompañarnos esta mañana en nuestro evento de conversación en comunidad. Mi nombre es Linda Prieto, Y tengo el gran placer de servir como la directora ejecutiva de Upward Scholars. Si necesita interpretación de inglés a español, favor de hacer clic en el botón con icono de globo que aparece en la parte de abajo de su pantalla. Esperamos un momentito. Thank you to Luis and Brenda, Upward Scholars, Habla Más, Spanish interpreters for providing interpretation services this morning. If you'd like to hire them for your events, we are dropping their contact information in the chat. I also want to thank our event sponsor, the Silicon Valley Community Foundation, our planning committee for all the behind the scenes efforts, our speakers and moderator. Many of you have already received our 2022 impact letter and learned about everything we were up to last year. We're dropping it in the chat now. One major highlight from last year was our growth into Northern Alameda County with our new partners, the Northern Alameda Adult Education Consortium and the Peralta Community College District. We went from serving three community colleges in San Mateo County to adding four more community colleges in this partnership. Our goal for 2022 was to serve 40 Peralta students, and we stretched to serve 55 students in the East Bay. The following is a brief video from which one such student, Estefania. Hello, my name is Estefania Estrada. I'm a student at Berkeley City College and Merritt College. My career goal is to become a um, bachelor's in nursing, to become a nurse. Right now, I'm currently um, having an internship at Highland Hospital. In addition to that, I've been part of Apple Scholars since 2022. They have supported me immensely with, for, for example, with a CPR. They pay for my CPR certification in order for me to advance in my career in phlebotomy, which phlebotomy is big in nursing. And in order to get clinical experience and real uh, real connections with patients, with real patients, I needed this experience to be possible. And I just passed my program with, with a CPR certification, which it was required for this program. Also, they have helped me with a laptop with technology to be able to complete my assignments, to do my Zoom meetings. They also helped me with grocery gift cards. For example, like I was really low with my income. And when they sent me the grocery gift card, I was able to buy some grocery bags for the moment so I can stretch the dollar, stretch my money, because I'm, I'm a bartender myself. I rely on, I'm at low income myself. They also helped me with emergency fund this year, which it was huge because I was able to also pay my bills to pay part of my, my rent, which I lost hours due to the weather, the flooding, they cut some of the hours at work. Um, we have some issues and also they have helped me academically. They have supported me. They have checked check in on me. Martha was really great when she was working closer to me. And also, I had this amazing opportunity to work for Aqua Scholars directly. I'm a student intern of Peralta Community College District, supporting other students, learning about the struggles, and also telling them my story that we can relate to each other, that also understand what they're going through economically, you know, sometimes mentally. and I'm here to listen for them, support this mission that Apple Scholar has been working really, really hard to get here. And I'm part of this team and I'm looking forward to continue to be part of the organization. Thank you. Thank you, Estefania. Thank you for sharing your experiences, for being on the call with us this morning. 
and for being part of the Upward Scholars team and family. We're so proud to be supporting your journey and that of other adult immigrant students in the East Bay. You are indeed central to our continued growth with the Peralta Community College District. And I just wanna give a shout out to anyone who's on the call, especially Anne Gonzalez from the East Bay, who's been a great partner um, and any other students on the call this morning. Thank you for being here and thank you for trusting us. Um, as she mentioned, the Stefania also represents one of over 100 students across both counties who were impacted by the storms earlier this year. Upward Scholars is a community-centered organization. So whenever a crisis occurs, we quickly reach out to our students asking, how can we support them? So this year has been no different. We surveyed our students in January and issued over $19,000 in support and surveyed them again in March as the storms continued and sent an additional $76,000. So with your help, we have already dispersed over $95,000 in storm related aid already this year. And in addition to responding to unexpected events, we also did set and create and revise a new strategic plan for 2023. As you can see in the slide that's coming up now, this year is also full of opportunity for us. Not only are we looking to support more students than ever before, with a goal of reaching 400 students. We are also piloting our newest program, Teacher Up, to support at least 30 early childhood educators, some of them who are on the call here today. And last month, we also formed our first ever Student Alumni Ambassador Council, and most of them are also on the call. We'll be publicly announcing them a little later this month, so be on the lookout for that. Additionally, we are still looking for an office space to bring the team together and to have a place to welcome all of you, our students, our volunteers, our partners, and our community at large. So more to come on that. And to help us financially attain our goals, we have hired our first ever development director who is slated to start with us later this month. And let me tell you, I can hardly wait to introduce her to all of you. I know that together we will raise $1.25 million this year to support our students and their families in gaining economic mobility. Another exciting development is that we have already revamped and established a new advisory council and we'll be meeting actually this very afternoon for the very first time and some of them are here today, including our founder and former ESL teacher at Sequoia Adult School, Elizabeth Wheel, and I know she's on the call too. Now, as part of Teacher Appreciation Week, we are here to share more about our newest pilot, the Teacher Up program. Moderating today is our partner and friend, Christine Thorstensen. Christine serves as Silicon Valley Community Foundation's Director of Early Childhood Development, where she works to ensure that all young children in Silicon Valley have access to the care, education, and resources they need to grow and flourish. Recognizing the critical importance of those first years of a child's life and the subsequent impact on future success, Christine strives to support local, state, and federal efforts to dismantle the systemic barriers that stacked against our youngest and most vulnerable. Christine, thank you so much for joining us, for continuing to support our early childhood education work including the Nanny Up program, which we piloted back in 2019, which is now also under the Teacher Up umbrella. So thank you for your work as an early education advocate and for moderating today. Christine. Great. Thank you, Linda. And thank you to the entire Upward Scholars team and all the folks who are on the call today. Um, it truly is an honor to be here with you and be in community with you and be part of this great conversation. So I just wanted to start by sharing a little bit about my day yesterday, as opposed to today, um, because I actually had the opportunity to spend the day in Sacramento yesterday and stand shoulder to shoulder in solidarity with an amazing group of parents and providers who were advocating for fair wages and working conditions for all child care providers and affordable child care for all families. 
And walking alongside this amazing group of people and marched through the Capitol and held a press conference and banged the drums and chanted was amazing. And it reminded me of just how powerful we are when we put our voices together. And coming together today in this community conversation is an important step in building a stronger child care system for us all. We know child care is a, it's a key piece of infrastructure for livable, sustainable communities for working families. It's a means for children to be prepared for future school success. And it's an economic contributor for the cities, the county, both directly and indirectly by generating employment and tax revenue. And yet, despite all of this, our child care system is in crisis a crisis many years in the making that's impacting our economic stability and growth and the ability of families to live and thrive in our region. And at the center of this crisis is our workforce. We literally simply do not have enough early care professionals to meet the demand and we need to bring more folks into the field. But at the same time, we need to advocate for changes to this system so that we can pay all of our providers a fair wage, a thriving wage for the work they're doing. So just to set the stage of where we're at in San Mateo County, um, since 2017, we've actually seen a decline of 13% of child care spaces in our family child care homes, which are a critical part of our system. Today, we have 101 fewer providers than we had pre-pandemic, and this loss is impacting our infant and toddler care the most. We've seen a loss of 43% of infant and toddler spaces. And to put those into the numbers, Right now, we're short approximately 7,000 licensed child care spaces for children under five and more than 10,000 spaces for children five to 12 years old. And by far, the greatest shortages are for subsidized child care. We only have capacity to meet 52% of the demand for children two to four years old. And for infants and toddlers, we only have capacity to meet 4% of the demand for subsidized care. So what does that mean for our conversation today? Well, in San Mateo County, an estimated 5,300 people work in child care programs. That's great. But we actually need 2,800 more just to meet the demand for today. It doesn't take into account what we need moving into the future. And just like some of us on this call, our workforce is getting older. We don't all get to stay 21. Uh, so 42% are actually between the ages of 50 and 64. Only 11% of our workforce in the county are between 18 and 29 years old. And many are planning to leave the field. The recent survey indicated only about two thirds of our care providers plan to stay working in childcare for the in the next 12 months. So solving this crisis is gonna take creativity and collaboration, bring new providers into the field, support them on a pathway to success for themselves, their families and the children they care for. So let's dive into the conversation and explore how Upward Scholars is meeting this need. So while we go through the conversation, if you have questions for our panelists, please put them into the chat and we'll have time at the end um, to bring those questions forward. So. Our first guest today is Dana Chung, and it's just an honor and such a pleasure for me to be on a panel with Dana. I've had the privilege of working with her for the last few years. I'm constantly inspired by her, and I learn continuously from the work she's doing. So Dana is the co-founder and executive director of Community Equity Collaborative, a nonprofit incubator for building a more fair, just, and inclusive world for children. She's been a guest speaker and facilitator for numerous events related to equity, education, women, and childcare. Dana is also a member of KQED's Community Advisory Panel, the San Mateo County Child Care Partnership Council Workforce Committee, as well as Child Development Education Advisory Boards for Foothill, Kenyatta, and Skyline Community Colleges. So thank you, Dana, for being in conversation with me. Um, you started the Teacher Pipeline Project with Community Equity Collaborative five years ago. So tell us about the impetus for starting the Teacher Pipeline Project and briefly walk us through the history when it was under Community Equity Collaborative. Absolutely. Well, good morning. It is such a pleasure to be part of this conversation today. So the Teacher Pipeline uh, project was a pilot program that CEC launched in 2018 to address the severe shortage of early educators, uh, which we just heard about. We did that by recruiting and assisting community members to enroll in college 
and then offering wraparound support. Even before the pandemic, alarm bells were sounding that something had to be done about this crisis. And unfortunately, uh, as we've heard, COVID-19 not only revealed, it exacerbated systemic inequities, including the low wages that drive the early educator shortage and force roughly one in three parents to take time off or leave their jobs entirely. We also know that Latina educators represent one of the largest ECE demographics um, for the workforce here in the Bay Area, and yet are among the lowest paid. So at CEC, you know, we um, have heard and believe in that saying that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, but expecting different results. We knew that our approach needed to be different. Um, and we knew that the childcare crisis demanded new and innovative solutions. So what we built was a cohort-based, whole person-centered program. And when we removed barriers like costs, when we offered childcare, meals, laptops, and more, suddenly we had new people entering both our classrooms as well as the field. We were only able to do this because of our collaboration with local partners, including public schools, community colleges, the Boys and Girls Clubs, and more. And our learnings actually inspired state legislation and informed some of the local workforce developments here to build more inclusive and equitable pathways. Along this way, we were connecting with a lot of local groups and organizations, and that's when we got introduced to Upward Scholars. Uh, Christine, you were instrumental in those introductions. At CEC, we work as kind of like an incubator. We bring concrete solutions by launching pilot programs like the Teacher Pipeline Project, but then spinning them off to live with other organizations longer term. And it was so clear to me as soon as we met with Dr. Prieto and her team that Upward Scholars had the potential to not only continue, but to actually improve on our original model. And so as Christine's already shared, we've got this very severe current educator shortage of roughly 2,800 uh, early educators in San Mateo County, which is limiting access to high quality early childhood education for thousands of children here in our neighborhoods. And these challenges here in the Bay Area, they are not unique. Uh, the Council for Strong America has calculated that the nationwide cost annually to the infant toddler crisis uh, of childcare is about 122 billion with a B and growing. So clearly like we need programs like Teacher Up um, and that's why it's such an honor to be part of this conversation today as we celebrate and recognize the incredible work that Upward Scholars is doing and explore the opportunities that we have to work together and build upon this important work down the road. Great. Dana, thank you so much for your vision and all the work. Um, I know how much effort it took in the, you know, getting out there in the community, recruiting those first classes of folks. Um, and you really, you know, got this whole program started and Teacher Up is now in a position to take it to the next level. And I'm happy to say I'm starting to see models of this happening in other places too. So I think you've inspired a lot of work. So now I get to turn to Linda, who I'm also so excited to be on a panel with and I learned from and inspired by. Mm -hmm. um, and it was really exciting for me last year when we were looking to help find a new home for the Teacher Pipeline Project to be able to see that alignment and make the connection. So when I reintroduced you to Dana last year, who was looking for the organization to adopt Teacher Pipeline, what were your initial thoughts? I mean, I know I was excited, but maybe I was like, craziness. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so glad that you're both with us today. My goodness. I was excited. I was excited to reconnect with Dana and to know that she was interested in, oh my goodness, having Upward Scholars potentially, you know, be the new home of the Teacher Pipeline Project. So uh, we were, you know, got our heads thinking and historically we found really early childhood education has been the career 
where most Upward Scholar students are interested in pursuing. So the opportunity for us to focus on ECE students, their needs, and professional preparation within this context of an increased need for more early childhood educators in the workforce, as you both already described, you know, for us was seemed very timely. So we saw this as an overall win for Dana, for Upward Scholars, and for our community, also of working parents who, as you've said, need access to quality and affordable childcare. Um, so while this was an exciting opportunity for Upward Scholars, we were also faced with a reality of limited capacity to adopt, redesign, and pilot what has now become Teacher Up. Um, so at that time, you know, it was really critical and we're so thankful for the initial seed funding that we received from the Silicon Valley Community Foundation, which allowed us to also hire our programs manager, Marlene Torres Magaña, in early November. And she is also on the call this morning and leading our teacher up efforts and going full steam ahead. So it's been exciting and we've adapted and shifted and, and, and grown. Thank you. So tell me a little bit more about that, how you've adapted, shifted, grown. So what, since you took on the program, what have you, you've done with it? And then what are some of the goals for the future? I mean, I hope they're big because you saw those numbers. <laughs> right, right. Everybody. Well, you know, Dana really has been central even before we hired Marlene last summer in introducing us to so many of her partners that she was already working with so that we could continue to work with them also as part of Teacher Up. And then uh, Marlene started this year off strong, holding focus groups uh, with both current and former Upward Scholar students to really hear directly from them about the challenges that they face when considering a career in early childhood education. So then we took the student input and began to pilot the program this semester with 19 students already. And we are still recruiting more students with a goal of serving at least 30 in this first pilot year. And our goals are definitely in alignment with Dana's original goals, which are uh, to increase compensation, right, to reach living wages and parity, to build a pipeline to ensure a career, a career path for effective early educators, to maintain the diversity of the ECE workforce, to ensure that all students have access, um, equitable access to great educators, and to ensure the workforce has the skills to implement high quality practices. So um, the ways that we are accomplishing these goals is by working with our partners, specifically at Cañada and Skyline Colleges in this first year, to ensure that Teacher Up students receive ECE specific academic counseling by uh, providing professional development opportunities that include skills building on working with LGBTQ plus families, uh, bilingualism and biculturalism, CPR training, social emotional learning, and so many other topics. And we're also co-creating internship opportunities with our partners, some of who are on the call today, Family Connections, um, so that our teacher up students can work with their staff, parents, and young children to create the highest quality family learning community for all involved, which is really at the center of what Family Connections does and does so well. Um, and we're also sharing resources with teacher up students through our e-news communications. We're covering the one-time cost of having teacher up students enroll in Good to Know. Good to Know is an online network providing child development educational resources to raise awareness of career and professional development opportunities for our students. We are providing safety net funds to eligible teacher up students facing additional economic challenges. We are also advocate, allocating, excuse me, stipends to offset the many costs that our students will encounter while pursuing advancement in the field. Um, we know stipends also act as significant motivators for achievement, right? So our stipend initiative includes stipends uh, for course completion, for educational plans, for attendance at professional development opportunities, and other costs that present barriers such as a childcare, which uh, Dana mentioned earlier, and even transportation in the case of our students. So overall, we're really at the, um, committed to increasing the pipeline of quality bilingual and bicultural early childhood educators here in our very, you know, like local community. Wow, that, that is a lot. And thank you, thank you for, for doing that and for thinking in such a robust and holistic way to approach the, this um, 
workforce development project and building and supporting our students so that they can go out in the community and support our families and children. Um, and I just love to hear all of these names of other partners in the community that are now connecting and working together. This is to completely what we hope for is that we can align some of these partners and collectively, to, you know, together we are stronger. Um, so thank you so much for, for reaching out and making those connections. So just, okay, a couple questions kind of for both of you. So feel free to jump in. Um, what is it that makes Upward Scholars and Teacher Up unique to the other workforce development efforts that are happening to build the early care workforce? Well, I can jump in. Um, you know, what we learned with the Teacher Pipeline Project is that expanding access for children um, and equity for educators that hinges on this kind of holistic support uh, paired with the robust pathways that lead to higher wages. And as I mentioned before, it was clear from our very first meeting that Upward Scholars um, and CEC, what we had done, that we shared that similar vision and values. We both believed in a whole person framework, which is so evident at Upward Scholars with their four pillars. Um, I mean, that list, wow, like <laughs> what we just heard is, is, is incredible, but but it is reflective of um, the lived experience of participants in the program. And so, you know, by not just limiting support to academic support or career support, but really going deep into those wraparound resources makes such a huge difference. Um, I think it's actually good that te the teacher uh, uh, program is not like a one size fits all program, but rather they are really uh, designing it to meet not only the unique needs, but also to capitalize on the unique strengths of the Latinx community. And I think that's really huge. Absolutely. And thank you for calling out the, how wonderful it is to have something that really identifies capital, like you say, capitalize the strengths, the incredible gifts that um, we're bringing to the field and to our children and families. So thank you. And thank you, Linda. Um, Dana, one quick question for you. You know, you did this for a few years and you've passed it over to, to Linda. Any extra advice you'd give her for, you know, their efforts for, for building out our early care workforce? Any little nugget of wisdom to share? You bet. Well, so <laughs> my first piece of advice would be to persist. It can be really hard and even frustrating at times, but you guys, our early educators, our partners in the field, you are my heroes. Um, early educators are not only brain architects who are educating these young minds, but they are also making it possible for families to go to work and local economies to grow. You are doing worthy work, so persist. My second piece of advice is to persist in partnership. You do not have to do it alone. There are resources, there are partners, there are folks like these amazing folks at Upward Scholars, uh, Dr. Prieto, along with the members of her team, including Diana and Marlena, uh, who are leading Teacher Up, they are there to work and support you. Um, so you don't have to go down this path alone. They are gonna walk alongside you. And I really believe in uh, the amazing strength and future success of our early educators. So persist and persist in partnership. Perfect. I'm going to put that on my bulletin board. <laughs> like words <laughs> of wisdom, persist. And sometimes, you know, early care and learning is, it's tough. It's a hard job. And sometimes you feel alone. Um, so yeah, under seeking out the partnership, connecting with others, and, and then please persist. Our babies need you. Um, Linda, how can students, if we've inspired them today, <laughs> how can they learn more about Upward Scholars and Teacher Up? How can they get involved? 
Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Dana, for that. I love those nuggets and words of wisdom. Um, definitely any interested students who are on this call and not ready for the program, any of our, our friends and partners who are on this call uh, and know of students who would benefit from Teacher Up, please connect the, directly with Marlene Torres Magaña. Again, she's our programs manager here at Upwork Scholars. You can reach out to her via email or phone. Uh, and everything is appearing in the chat, I'm told. So please reach out to her. Definitely. Great. And uh, just before I, I ask one more question, I'm going to encourage anyone in the um, audience who's listening at the moment to not think of yourself as just the audience listening, but what kind of questions do you have? So please, if you've got any, lean in, throw them in the chat, and then we can ask our, our panelists. Um, so this is an ambitious program with ambitious goals, and clearly there is um, a real need for more early educators. So, Linda, what does Upward Scholars need, um, aside from partnerships or in addition to partnerships to funding? What do we need to make this um, be as successful as possible? Where right. can working folks lean in? Yeah, you know, in addition, obviously, to financial support, um, and we do recognize that we always need <laughs> financial support and that no gift is ever too big. We are also in the process of hiring a full time programs coordinator to support Marlene with teacher up efforts. So that is uh, coming. If you know of any uh, great candidates, uh, please send them our way. Um, and also I'd add as we continue to flesh out our internships and apprenticeships, we're also looking to uh, partner with other agencies, right? We've got Sequoia YMCA on the call this morning, looking to partner with them and be in communications with their team. So excited that that's coming up soon. And if there are any agencies even interested in hiring our teacher up students, um, they can also connect directly with Marlene. For example, last month, our friends at SV2 hired a couple of our teacher up students to provide childcare uh, during the Redwood City Together and SV2 community impact and celebration night. So our students went in there, they had activities for the kids, right? The parents, the adults could be attending the event and our teacher up candidates were caring for their children in a, le uh, a rich learning environment in a, in a safe environment as well. Awesome. And I hope you saw in the chat, Karen's already got her. She's like, I want some. I want some. So, so that, I think there's, there's a lot of folks out there who would be very interested in having um, some of your students come and work in their programs. So um, I see a couple of questions coming in. So we'll get to those in a few minutes. But uh, I wanted to move on to introduce Marta Lilly. Um, if, if that's okay, Linda, then we'll come back to questions at the Absolutely. end. Absolutely, yes. Okay. Um, so it is a real honor to be able to introduce um, a, a, a graduate, a participant of, of Upward Scholars, um, who is a real inspiration, it's Marta Lilly. So Marta Lilly is an Upward Scholars alumna and owner of Lilly's Bilingual Family Daycare. When she immigrated to the United States in 2014, she did not know English. She enrolled at Sequoia Adult School High School and transferred to Kenyatta College, where she received a certificate in early childhood education in 2018, and soon after worked as a preschool teacher. During the pandemic, she earned a site supervisor permit as well as an associate's degree in early childhood education. With Upward Scholars support, Marta Lilly also opened her licensed family childcare home, becoming a business owner while studying full-time. She was a busy person. <laughs> Last May, Marta Lilly earned a bachelor's degree in early childhood education and a minor in special education from San Francisco State University. Congratulations. Again, I don't know when you had time to sleep during this period of time. So, um, And she's looking forward to growing her business and pursuing a master's degree in the future. So Marta Lilly, as an alumna of Upward Scholars and now with your own licensed family child care home, how did they support you? And you know, how did that impact your journey even before Teacher Up? Hi, good, good morning, everyone. So uh, for me, it's an honor to be here with you guys and you know, and especially, you know, being part of Upward Scholar, this amazing organization. Um, I mean, as I said, and to everyone. I wouldn't make it if it wasn't for a body scholar because at the beginning when I started, um, you know, the community college, my only goal was learning English and that's all. So, but little by little, you know, um, and encouraged from a body scholar, they would encourage me to, you know, looking for more opportunities and looking for something else. And they were encouraged me to think, you know, 
think bigger. And then everything changed, my mind changed and everything. I think that's the first thing that they provided me was believing in myself and thinking that I can do, you know, better things and make possible all my dreams come true. So our scholars have helped me since all the students, when I, I transferred to Canada College, they helped me with my books. They were, you know, helping me to with a laptop that was really useful for me. And as well, they they were providing me, uh, you know, food cards to buy food for my family. Um, I was using the bus at that time. They were providing me clipper cards and a lot of, a lot of, all of many things. But the most important thing was the emotional support that was really, really, you know, helpful for me at that time. So, and with the help of Harvard Scholar, so I have my own daycare now and I graduated from San Francisco State because even if I graduated from Canada College, they were supporting me when I was in the university, Linda, uh, Elizabeth, and all people from Abbott School, they were calling me how was, I was doing at the university, um, you know, how everything was doing and everything. And when I decided to open my own daycare, they said, oh, we are going to do it together. That was really, really nice from them. Thank you for sharing. I think the message, when, once you become part of the Upward Scholars family, you're in it. That's it for good. They're gonna be with you all along the way, so. It's great. And congratulations on, on all the hard work you put in and, and what you've done. So just a little, you were in at Upward Scholars before we had Teacher Up. So when you think, of, how do you think a program like Teacher Up would have impacted your trajectory? How would that have been even more helpful? What do you think? Well, I think a program like Teacher Up will have helped me um, to achieve my goal faster. Because, you know, when I was in the community college, Teacher Up was not existed yet. So, and I was doing, um, even if I have support in the community college for own counselor or somebody else, that was not the same because, you know, Teacher App is going to provide the opportunity to students to choose the right classes, uh, you know, probably are going to give you more flexibility in the classes. That was something that sometimes we didn't have at that time because we have even evening classes or morning classes. That was useful for me, but sometimes it was really difficult. So I was working in the day um, and going to classes in the afternoon. I didn't have the opportunity to have, you know, flexibility on that. So, and I think with if at that time Teacher Up was, um, you know, opportunity for me, at, at this moment, I was going to finish probably, I was going to finish my bachelor. I mean, not my bachelor, my master. Because so now I just, I, I will start my master probably this coming fall. So, but if teacher I was, um, will be at that time that I was taking classes probably by now. So I think uh, I was uh, going to be probably finish my, my master now. And also probably my daycare was, was probably, I, I will have the opportunity to open my daycare before the pandemic and not during the pandemic. Yeah, because teacher up, as Linda mentioned when I talked to her, so it's a good opportunity for all the students to pursue a career in child development and to give them the opportunity and the encourage to continue their education. And that's a really, really good program. Great. Now you mentioned opening up your daycare and I wanna know more. So tell us a little bit about the history of it, how you got started in it, inspired you, and what do you see for the future for it? So. Well, um, my daycare, Lily's Bilingual Family Daycare, this is a dream come true. Since I started and the ECE program, my, my goal was going to open a childcare program. That was my main goal. But my idea was going to open my daycare when I finished all my classes, my bachelor and everything. So, but since the time that I was working with kids, because I have been working with kids for around six years. So I see that, uh, you know, in some of the places they don't care too much about education. They see education as a, as a job that you have to do and that's it. And that's an easy job. That's the people think about it. Since uh, I was working there, I I wanted to make some change and give them the opportunity to kids in the family to have a, you know, a good childcare program. But I couldn't do it because I was not the director. I, that was not the own, I was not the owner of the program. Even if I wanted to help the families, um, the change that I was making was little. So I was talking with directors, I was talking with people in the program, with the other teachers, telling them that we have to change the curriculum to make you know the curriculum more affordable for the families and giving kids the opportunity to have a really good childcare program in education. So, but they said that they didn't want to change, make the change because they know that they they want to you know do the easy job, just look at the kids and that's it, and they don't care too much. 
So, and I didn't want that for me. So I was going to be a teacher and I was teaching the kids because I wanted to make the, you know, the chains have, uh, you know, the families to feel that the kids are, were doing, were in the good place and they were, we were making something good for them. So, and then I changed the job because I said, probably that's not the right job for me. I need to find another, another place. I find another program, but the chains were the same. People were not doing nothing for the kids, for the families. They just putting the kids in the program, especially for the kids for the special needs. So they need, they didn't care about them. They placed the kids in the program and nobody cared about it. And I, and I was feeling that something was missing in me. And I decided, uh, you know, to move up and, I talked to Linda and said, you know, I cannot make change in the program that is not mine. If I want to make change, I need to open my own program. So that's why I decided to start my, my own program. I talked to Linda, but I didn't tell Linda we're going to start right now. So she started moving everything. And then a couple of weeks after she said, you know, I have the house for you. You can open your own program. I said, I don't have money for that. So and everybody, Linda and the community, they started, you know, trying to find the toys and everything say you make a list and we are going to find the things for you so everybody started looking you know for things that i need they make a, a wishing list and all the things start coming to my my house so and and you know it was amazing to see the support from the community the support from our scholar and everyone in the community that was really amazing to see that so and for the future uh my plans now we have a child care you know a family daycare now so, but for the future, my plan is to open um, a big child care program to accept uh, minimum 26 kids and make the program more inclusive because we have kids now with special needs in a day, the daycare. So, but my idea is open a child care program that we, um, you know, make them more inclusive or probably full inclusive to accept all the kids in the family. It doesn't matter if they have money to pay for it or they, uh, you know, they have a special needs or not. So to make inclusive program to accept all all the families. So I will um, I'm working on it now to see how the projects go. So to find a place and everything because that's my idea. That's um, I'm working with another uh, people to see if we can get support from them to pay for you know for the kids that have, don't have money to pay for it because I know that some of the families works you know like a restaurant something like that and they don't have money to pay the tuition for the kids because childcare products in this area is really expensive. So and I, I want that, uh, you know, my program to provide the opportunity to all the families to have the kids in a good place and they don't, you know, they don't be worried that they don't have money to pay for the program. So that's mm -hmm. my my goal for the future. Thank you. I got to say the families who are in your program are very lucky people, I think, and the children. Um, I, you know, under, you saw something in the community that you, you weren't happy with and, and you moved ahead and have created um, what I'm sure is a warm and loving and amazing place for, for our kids. And I hope, I hope you can move into a bigger space, put that out there to the air and just, <laughs> sounds like Linda can make things ma magic happen. She pulls that community together. So, um, we have a couple questions in a couple minutes left. So I've, um, pulled it some questions from the uh, part, the rest, our audience members. Um, Linda, one question for you. Um, for some of the partners or prospective students on this call, what are the requirements to be eligible for Upward Scholars and Teacher Up? And what's the process like? Oh, great question. So first and foremost, to be eligible for Upward Scholars, we are targeting an adult immigrant student population from a low-income household, right? And so what that means is typically our students um, are coming to us from one of our partner adult schools. And since we're piloting teacher up in this first year only in San Mateo County, there are five adult schools across the county that then feed into the three colleges in the San Mateo Community College District. So you can join in as early as a student coming into Kenyatta taking those early ESL classes, or if you've already gone through that process or tested out of that process, still meet the demographic of being an adult immigrant uh, from a low income household and are already starting ECE classes, you can come in at that stage as well. So once you qualify to be an Upward Scholars, uh, then you can, contact Marlene again and let her know you have interest or you think you might have interest in early childhood education and she'll work with you uh, to get you into the teacher up specific program and to be receiving those services as well. Great. 
And everybody on this call, I'm sure you, you want to be an early childhood educator. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Come on, on board. Um, and Linda, just a question about where the 19 students in this first teacher up cohort were recruited from. Are they spread out um, between all the schools and how do, what was the recruitment process? Yeah, so those 19 students are spread out specifically through Cañada, across Cañada and Skyline Colleges. And so those are the partner colleges we're working with right now. And so we see them across the county. Uh, you know, most of our Upward Scholar students do live in the East Palo Alto, East Menlo Park, Redwood City uh, geography. Uh, but in this case, these 19 students, most again in that area, but across up into uh, Skyline College as well. Thank you. Um, that's it for the questions we have. Um, and I think that wraps up our fabulous panel discussion with um, such wonderful folks who are, are really making a difference in our community and for our kids. Any last words, thoughts before I turn over to Linda to close us out? All good? Thank you. All right, Linda, thank you. It's been a real honor and ple pleasure to be here and to have this conversation. Uh, and connect with everybody. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Oh my goodness. Thank you for agreeing and for being here as our moderator, Christine, and to co-panelists, uh, Dana and Marta Lili. Thank you both for sharing. Marta Lili, I can't uh, wait to be able to organize a ribbon cutting for when that center does happen. We know it's going to happen. It's only a matter of time and we will be there alongside you again. Super excited for all your successes and what you're doing in our community and for our community. And to all of you for joining us this morning, right, and showing your support of Upward Scholars, of Early Childhood Educators, and of working parents and young children throughout our community who need our teacher up candidates now more than ever, as you've heard over and over this morning. I look forward to continuing to partner in the rest of this year and into the future. Today, we also launch our Move Up Education for the Future campaign. So please take some time, donate today, to prepare Upward Scholar students to thrive in fulfilling careers and join our region's professional workforce. The donate link is now in the chat and I encourage you to give generously in support of our adult immigrant students as they pursue a degree and career development that improves their lives, that uplifts their families, and that moves our entire community forward. Also, you know, never hesitate to reach out have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for being here. I love you all. I can't wait to see you in person and thank you for all your support.